To determine the density of hot air inside this balloon, what we have done is drawn a free body diagram showing the forces that are acting on the balloon. We have actually two gravitational forces. We have the gravitational force exerted on the balloon itself and then the gravitational force exerted on the hot air inside the balloon. Notice they are both mg forces, but we used a subscript b to denote the mass of the balloon and then ha to denote the mass of the hot air inside the balloon. And then there is the upward buoyant force since the balloon is placed in a fluid. It's placed in air, which is a fluid, and that's going to create an upward acting buoyant force. Now, we know that because the hot air balloon is in equilibrium, the sum of the forces acting in the y direction would equal zero. Notice again that because the buoyant force is upward, that force will be positive, and the two gravitational forces, because they point downward, will both be negative. So we can begin to write B minus M H A G minus M sub B G equals zero. And then what we can do is recall the equation for the buoyant force. We know that the buoyant force is the density of the fluid in which the balloon is floating multiplied by the volume of the displaced fluid times g. Furthermore, what we're going to do is replace the mass of the hot air with a different expression. Recall that the density is equal to the mass divided by the volume. And so what we'll do is actually multiply both sides of that equation by volume. That will cancel the volume out on the right hand side. And then we can see that volume times density is also equal to mass. So for the mass of the hot air, what we'll do is take the volume of the hot air, which we will see is given in the problem, times the density of the hot air. So that will be an expression that we'll use instead of mass because they are equivalent. And then we'll multiply this by G to cap it off. As for the other gravitational force, we can just leave that the same. We're going to do minus the mass of the balloon times g. And the reason for that is because the mass of the balloon was directly given to us. Now, if we look carefully, we can see that g appears in each term of our equation. So what we can do to simplify it just a little bit is to divide all terms by g. Technically, you have to divide the right-hand side by g as well. So all the g's are going to cancel. And this will leave us with the following equation. Now recall overall the question wants us to find the density of the hot air inside the balloon. So what we're going to do is try to solve for that. And to do that we will add the term VHA density HA to both sides of the equation. We could then divide both sides of the equation by the volume of hot air inside the balloon. That cancels it out on the right hand side and lo and behold we have solved for the density of the hot air so why don't we just clean this up a little bit and at this point it's just a matter of plugging in the known numbers what we should take note is that the volume of the fluid which which remember is the air that's surrounding the balloon is the same as the volume of the hot air inside the balloon and basically the reason for that is because the entire hot air balloon is submersed in, or submerged in the air. So we can imagine the air is sort of like a fluid resting and that fluid surrounds the entire balloon. So when it comes to the volume of fluid that is displaced by the balloon, it's going to be the entire volume of the balloon itself. And therefore, these two volumes are going to be equal to one another. So we'll go back up and we'll grab the numbers. We need three numbers with the density of the fluid, the volume of the balloon, and the mass of the balloon. Let's make sure we have those. Here's the total mass of the balloon. Here is the volume of air inside of the balloon. And then this is the density of the surrounding air in which the balloon is floating. So there are the known values plugged in. And when we punch this into our calculator and round to the nearest hundredth, we're going to get about 1.04. And dimensionally, since we're calculating a density, this should come out into kilograms per meter cubed. You can see that dimensionally here, the meters cubed and the meters cubed will cancel each other out when you multiply those numbers. That's going to leave you with kilograms in the numerator and meters cubed in the denominator. And that's where that unit is indeed coming from. So this is indeed the correct answer to the question.